We're going to do an example now to see how we can calculate the magnetic field in a particular problem, which is relatively easy, and we'll see why this particular geometry makes it easy. So the wire starts at infinity, and it goes along this radial line, and then it goes along an arc of a circle for a, that subtends a certain angle theta, and then it continues back to infinity along a radial line like that. So the line, the wire is this red part, and you can see the direction of the current everywhere it's as, as given over here. Now the question is saying, what's the magnetic field at the origin, at the center of this arc of circle? So the radial line extends from the origin to infinity here, and the radial line goes like this from here to here, and then the arc of a circle has its center point O. So we want the magnetic field at point O, due to this whole wire. We can, subs we can uh, cut up the wire into three parts. The first part from infinity to here. And let's look at that part first. Remember, uh, this is the dB, is the magnetic field due to an element of current along this straight line. Now, what are the directions of ds and r hat for any point along this straight line? Well, the ds vector, remember what it means. It points in the direction of the current. And the r-hat unit vector points from the element of current to the point where you want to find the magnetic field. So the angle between them is zero. So if you get the magnitude of the magnetic field due to this element of current, you get mu node over 4 pi r squared i ds sine of the angle between them, and sine zero is zero. So it gives no contribution. Remember we showed in the intuitive videos that we showed in the beginning that an element of current doesn't produce any magnetic field along the line that it's on. So actually none of the elements of length along this part contribute to any magnetic field at point O. Okay, what about if you take the mag magnetic field due to this part of the wire from here to infinity? Well, it's pretty much the same thing, kind of. What are the directions of ds and r hat? ds here for an element over here points in the direction of the current, so now it's pointing radially outwards. And the r hat unit vector points from the element of current to the point where you want to find the magnetic field. So the angle between them is 180 degrees. So the magnitude of the magnetic field, you get, it, it's, you get a sine 180. Sine 180 is zero and you get zero. So still, this part of the wire then doesn't contribute anything to the magnetic field at the origin. So the only part that's going to contribute then would be this curved part here, the arc of a circle. So if you go from A to C, what are the directions of ds and r hat for an element of current, say, over here? Well, the ds element of, uh, element of length always points in the direction of the current along the wire. And the r hat unit vector points from the element of current to the, uh, to the point where you want to find the magnetic field. So in this case, there's an angle of 90 degrees between the two vectors, and the angle of 90 degrees applies for any of the elements of current from A to C always the angle between ds and r hat is 90 degrees for any of these elements. And that's what's going to make the problem easy to, easier to solve. So what's the direction of the magnetic field due to the element of current, this one? If you take ds cross r hat, you'll get something pointing into the page. That means that the magnetic field at this point, O, is into the page due to this element of current. And it's going to be the same thing for any other element of current over here. So the total magnetic field we know, it's going to be into the page in this particular problem. So let's get the magnitude of the magnetic field. So the magnitude, as usual, you get this sine, but now the angle is 90 degrees. Sine 90 is 1. So you, the, the, the angle issue goes away, and that's what makes this problem easier to solve relatively. So we know now that dB, the magnitude of the magnetic field, due to only this element of current, is mu node i ds over 4 pi r squared. Now r is the same everywhere for all these elements of current. It's the same radius. So that also makes it easy to solve because r is not a variable in this case. We can replace ds, the element of uh, arc length, um, to be r d theta. We've done this many times before. And when you do that, you get an r will cancel in the top and the bottom. And so this is now the magnetic field due to only an element of current uh, at some location along between points A and C. Now, if you want the total magnetic field, 
due to all these elements of current from A to C, you integrate this. When you integrate this, mu naught is a constant, I is a constant, 4 pi is a constant, R is a constant, so you're basically integrating d theta. Integration of d theta is just theta. So it turns out that the magnetic field at the origin, due to all the elements of current from A to C, just turns out to be mu naught I over 4 pi R times theta, the angle that subtends the first point and the last point. Okay, so what if you make the wire into the shape of a circle of radius r? So here the current starts out at infinity, it goes here and then it goes around a complete loop and then it goes back to infinity. These two are on top of each other really, but I just put them a bit separated so you can see what how the current is going. So what would the angle be in this case if you're going one complete revolution? If you're going one complete revolution, theta is equal to so when you put theta to be 2 pi, the pi will cancel with the pi, the 2 will cancel with the 4, and you'll be left with only 1 over 2. So this would be then be the magnetic field at the center of a loop of current. If you have a loop of current in space, this would be the magnetic field exactly in the center of the loop. It will have this magnitude, and the direction you can get it from the right from the ds cross r hat rule ds points in the direction of the current, r hat points towards the origin, so in this case ds cross r hat is into the page, so the magnetic field here will be into the page. So this is the summary of the case where the current is going clockwise, the magnetic field will be into the page in this case, and I denote this by the cross, and it will have this magnitude. You can, if you want, use a, a, a simpler way to get the magnetic field um, by putting your fingers in the direction of the current and then the direction of the thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field. But remember that this is kind of a simplification. Uh, the original way to do it is to know ds and r hat and get ds cross r hat and to add the magnetic field due to all the elements. If the, magnetic, if the current is now going anti-clockwise, then what's going to change? What's going to change for each element of current is not the r hat, but the ds. So that means the magnetic field is going to be now out of the page. So it depends if it's uh, clockwise, it'll be into the page, anti-clockwise, it'll be out of the page. And it'll have the same value, mu naught i over 2r. Okay, so this is an element, uh, a current, a loop of current. Uh, there's current going around in a circle. And this is what the magnetic field lines would look like uh, for this loop of current. We've only addressed now how to get the magnetic field at this point, at the center. We got what it was just now. But this is what it looks like everywhere else. It's quite complicated. It doesn't look like a simple kind of, uh, um, like the electric field, for instance, of a point charge. It's much more complicated. Here, this doesn't end here, of course, it continues to go around, and here it continues to go around, but we just had to cut them off at some point, or else the whole screen would be full of magnetic lines.